This is part one of a three-part series where I'm going to show you how you can throw a fantastic burger night and make some brioche buns, some burgers, and some delicious wedge fries, all with one use of the oven. In this first episode, I'm going to make some brioche buns. Personally, I think they're the perfect burger bun. They're surprisingly easy to make, and they're soft, light, and flavorful, and I don't think they overwhelm the burger. So brioche is an enriched dough, which means a dough that goes beyond the usual ingredients of flour, water, salt, and yeast. In this case, milk instead of water, and then the addition of butter, eggs, and sugar. There are several variations on the brioche recipe, but I like this one. It's simple, but it still produces a great burger bun. So first, I'm going to make the dough, and while it's resting, I'm going to go over how I like to prepare my oven. So this recipe is for six large buns, and brioche can be very, very challenging to make by hand, so I'm going to use my stand mixer with the dough hook. I'll begin by adding all the ingredients, starting with 265 grams of lukewarm whole milk, nine grams of active dry yeast, 30 grams of sugar, and then one large egg and one egg yolk, 435 grams of all-purpose flour, 10 grams of kosher salt, and 50 grams of softened, unsalted butter. Then turn the mixer on to low until all the ingredients are combined. That should take about three to four minutes. Occasionally scraping down the side of the bowl to be sure everything is combined. Then I'll turn the mixer to medium speed for about 10 minutes. During that time, the gluten will develop and it will all come together to make a smooth and stretchy dough. Then I'll turn the dough out onto my board, no need for any flour, and just slap and fold it a few times. Then shape it into a ball. And put it into a bowl. Cover with a damp cloth and let it proof for about two hours and it should double in size. Okay, while the brioche is proofing, I'm gonna begin preparing my oven. I want to bake the brioche using some retained heat that's around 375 Fahrenheit or 190 centigrade. I place the fire in the back of the oven. If the fire is in the center of the oven floor, I can't get a good read on the temperature and the oven can get too hot. Once the temperature in the center of the oven floor reaches around 450 Fahrenheit, that's 230 centigrade, then I'm gonna put on the oven door. That will suffocate the fire and give the heat enough time to even out across the oven. That's the theory at least. I've actually experimented with this several times and I think I've got it to work. But as I've said many times, the more you use your oven, the greater your understanding of how it performs and how it manages heat. But not all ovens are the same. They can perform very differently based on their construction and insulation. If you find it hard to get your oven to the correct retained heat temperature and maintain that heat, then it may just be easier to bake the brioche in a conventional oven at 375 Fahrenheit or 190 centigrade for about maybe 18 to 20 minutes or until they're a lovely golden brown. So while the oven is taking care of the heat, I'm gonna get back to my brioche. The dough has had its first proof and doubled in size. I'm going to lightly flour the board and turn out the dough. and then divide it into six equal pieces.
and shape them into balls very similar to making pizza. Then space them out on a tray lined with parchment paper. And then I'll cover them with the bottom of my proofing tray and let them rise, which should take about another hour. That was a bit hot. So the temperature is still a little bit high. It's at 390 Fahrenheit or 200 degrees centigrade. So I'm going to leave the door off to let the temperature come down a little bit. So the oven is close enough to the temperature I'm looking for. So I'm going to brush the dough with an egg wash made from one egg and one tablespoon of milk. Unlike a conventional oven, there's no glass door to watch them baking. And I don't want to take the door off to have a peek because that will let out too much heat. So I just have to hope I've got everything right. I'm pretty happy with how these have turned out. So I'm gonna let them cool for a little bit on the tray and then I'll transfer them to a cooling rack. Now I can fire up my oven again to get them ready for the burgers. It's still pretty warm, so it's not gonna take very long to get it to the temperature I need. So I'll see you in the next episode. Do you think it would be okay for me to say my wife is impressed with my buns? <laughs>